is these new ships, they, they turn the Atlantic Ocean into a kind of Goldilocks ocean. It's neither too big nor too small. What that means, it's big enough that in different shores around the Atlantic, wildly different things are happening. So up in Europe, you've got the sort of early stages of sort of manufacturing economies being developed. Down in Africa, you've got totally different sorts of societies where people can capture slaves. Europeans can capture slaves. Over in the Americas, you're growing completely different sorts of crops. Sugar and tobacco flourish. Cotton flourishes. The Europeans turned the North Atlantic into this famous triangular economy that you probably heard about in high school, where you can sail around the economy from Europe down to Africa, over to the Americas, back again, um, picking up different goods at different points, selling at each point along your trade, making profits everywhere you go, generating enormous revenues. Now, that's only the beginning of what happens when the geography changes meaning. Europeans realize, boy, this is, this is great. We're getting so rich. If we really understood how the winds and the tides work and how the stars move, though, we could get so much richer. And Europeans start thinking about these problems much harder than before. They start developing entirely new ways to look at nature. In order to answer these questions about how the winds and the tides work, how the stars move, they've got to come up with entirely new kinds of mathematics. They promptly do so. Uh, Newton and Leibniz at the end of the 17th century, both of them invent calculus, which you need to solve these problems. Both of them then spend the rest of their lives accusing the other of stealing the idea from them. But a, a cascade of breakthroughs follows. In mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, Europe has a 17th century scientific revolution. China doesn't, India doesn't, the Turkish Empire doesn't. Not because Europeans are smarter than these other people, but because they're asking different questions. Geography has changed its meaning, forcing new questions upon the Europeans. As their natural scientific understanding of the world takes off, in the 18th century, they start applying these sorts of methods back onto their own society in what we normally call the Enlightenment, asking how does society work? Can we have a political science which would explain our society? By the end of the 18th century, profits are being driven up so high by the Atlantic economy, particularly in Britain, which is coming gradually to dominate the Atlantic economy. Profits are being driven up so high that wages are being driven up as well. And British entrepreneurs are finding that they're being priced out of their export markets in Europe. They can't produce the goods as cheaply as other people because the wages are being driven up so high. What they need, they realize, is some way to substitute machinery for labor. So they start trying to mechanize production. They go even further. They start tapping into the energy of fossil fuels to drive their machines. As they do this, Britain has an industrial revolution. And again, not because the Brits are smarter or work harder than other people, but because they're asking different questions. Different questions are thrust on them by geography. Coal and steam allow the British to project their power globally. They conquer India, they crush China. By 1860, they bestride the world like a colossus. Now, all of this has happened basically because of the way geography has changed its meanings since the year 1400. And that's why I say it's geography that explains why the West rules.